पश्चिम शरदा शतम जीवेम शरदा शतम बुद्धेम शरदा शतम रोहेम शरदा शतम पूषेम शरदा शतम भवेम शरदा शतम भूयेम शरदा शतम भूयसी शरदा शतम Atharva Veda is the fourth Veda. It is the Veda of compensation, of rectification, of correction. When the harmony between your knowledge, the action and the will is disturbed, you have to forcefully bring it back into harmony. The fourth Veda or the Atharva Veda therefore represents that, you know, re-establishment of the harmony. All Ayurvedic literature is based on the philosophy called Sankhya, meaning to know the truth. The Rishi Kapila discovered 24 principles or elements of the universe. Prakriti, the female energy, creates all forms in the universe, while Purusha, the male energy, is witness to this creation. Purusha, the male energy, represents the dormant consciousness. Prakriti is the female creative energy. In the transcendental state, they are in harmony with each other. Prakriti takes the primary role to manifest as the tanmatras of five senses, the essence of life. The panchatattvas, the five manifest elements, such as ether, air, fire, water and earth, and the panchamahabhutas, the five subtle elements inherent in the five manifest elements. When creation takes place, the first evolute to manifest is Mahad, the great mind. This Mahad has four components, Ahamkara, the ego, Chitta, the memories, Buddhi, the logic and intellect, Manas, the ability to reflect. This entire spectrum in creation is governed by the Trigunas, which represent the inherent nature of Tamas, Rajas and Sattva. The Trigunas control the behavior of body, mind, emotions and also the spirit. Central to this healing science is the doctrine of Tridosha, the vital energies of Vat, Pitta and Kapha. Beautiful aspects of Ayurveda is its Tridosha Siddhanta or the Tridosha principle based on which everything in Ayurveda works. We say in Ayurveda that a Vaidya should be Dosha Egadrik. You should see Doshas in everything, in human being, in the, in the plant's kingdom, in the thing which are immovable, everything a Vaidya should see, start seeing Doshas. And Vada, Pitta and Kabha, the three doshas which governed the entire universe according to Ayurveda. And what is this three doshas? Three doshas are nothing but a recombination in biological system by the different elements which we call as Panjamahabhudas. I would say that body is important, but body is not the only thing that is important. Body is important because body is the seat for your mind and mind and body together become a seed for your consciousness. Ayurveda Amrudanam. This is the rhyme from Veda, which means that Ayurveda is nothing but for longevity. Earlier medicine was an art and science was a very important tool of this art. Since we are following science, we make it very mechanized and rules and controllable. How can you control art? An artist has his own creativity. And so in science, we deal with diseases, which is deadly. In art, we deal with life which is healthy. In Ayurveda, the concept of diagnosis implies a moment-to-moment -moment monitoring of the interactions between order or health and disorder or disease in the body. Darsana, Sparsana, Prasnai. That Sparsana, Darsana means looking at a patient with the eye of Ayurveda not merely looking at. And Sparsanam is 
touching the body and understand the texture tonicity all those things is personal personal means interpreting that understanding by asking questions which is leading to that person so that we can get explanation of each of this condition all these diseases are originated because of the body's imbalance first the imbalance happens say in one dosha okay the then this this dosha will accumulate that's stage 1 after that it sort of gets into a state of agitation that's stage 2 stage 3 is that it spreads into the body stage 4 it goes into a vulnerable area up to this point ayurved can actually reverse everything because stage 5 is the manifestation of disease stage 6 is a manifestation of complications so an ayurvedic physician when he is looking at you he is actually being able to recognize you at each stage so that the disease can actually be reversed the cause can actually be taken away the ayurveda says how it can correct the body's imbalances by two methods one is the pacification method samana chikitsa second one is the purification method the purificatory method is shodhana chikitsa the famous pancha karma which we do in almost all good authentic ayurveda hospitals in ayurvedic medicine the practice of pancha karma is a therapeutic way of eliminating toxic elements from the body a successful panchakarma treatment helps eliminate the accumulated toxins in the body and yoga brings man to the natural state of tranquility which is equilibrium ayurveda complements yoga and yoga complements ayurveda ayurveda gives more importance to physical purification and the seat of mind whereas yoga directly interacts with the mind and its action in the body we say in yoga chale vade chalam chittam nischale nischalam bhavet if the mind is in tranquility the vada principle in the body will be also in balance ayurveda and yoga are sister sciences the father of yoga patanjali described the eight limbs of yoga and yogic practices these are the natural regulation of the nervous system discipline cleansing postures concentration contemplation the awakening of awareness and the state of perfect equilibrium so yoga is to unite the body with the mind and taking body and mind together to be it in par with the eternal ever green state of this self can yoga bring you into balance with your deepest self and nature indian thought has always celebrated imagination which is manam the mind so we are called manava animals who can imagine yoga enables our imagination to celebrate and understand nature in her totality that's the point of yoga the human animal has always tried to control nature and tried to control his environment somewhere in india's long history the control of nature turned inwards and became about the control of the body and the mind This inner journey became what we know of as yoga. For billions of years nature has been around and suddenly humans come about. And what makes humans special? We are capable of imagination. This imagination is purusha. And prakriti is nature and this conversation between the two is the birth of creation. And so we are always in conflict with nature which nature says you are just another animal and I'm saying no I'm special. No. And so my fear starts crumpling my mind. I refuse to accept reality and this is the birth of aham me i am important yoga is the opposite unraveling of it you start opening it and when it completely opens up no. when it reaches that state it sees the world as it is not the way i see it the word yoga is a sanskrit word it, uh, it comes from the root yuja which basically means to bind to align to hold so it's about falling in place at the right time and everything works out for you which is synthesis really the purpose of yoga is to still the mind stuff 
and unite the basic human consciousness with its original state of complete consciousness, or Purusha. It then goes on to say that the human being is made up of five layers or koshas that act in unison. The Annamaya Kosha, which is our physical body, the Pranamaya Kosha, which is our astral body, the Manomaya Kosha, which is our mental body, the Vijnanamaya Kosha, which is our higher overmind, and finally the Anandamaya Kosha, the blissful sheath. So we have to cross over the bridge on the physiological body, from the physical body to mental body. Then using the mental body, we have to understand, discriminate each and every part. Then naturally, you find that each and every cell in the system has its own intelligence, has its own memory, so that the, the cells can take of the body for me to think of God, the higher level of spiritual life. To align the koshas together, Patanjali prescribed a system called Ashtanga, or the eight-limbed path. The first five parts are the, the discipline part of it, the doing part of it. Uh, the last three parts uh, of the eight are internal. They are the outcome of practicing the five. So yama and niyama are the first two. Yama refers to how you behave with internally, how you experience the world, how you conduct yourself. Niyama are rules. Niyam means a rule or a discipline of uh, physically living, how you behave in contact with yourself and with the world around you. Then you come to asana, which is your connection with your own physical body. Then you come with pranayama. Uh, and the whole purpose of asana is to prepare the body for pranayama so that when you breathe, that prana can circulate completely, access different parts of your body. And then you come to pratyahara, which is restraint. Pratyahara actually means to withdraw the senses, but it's not, it doesn't mean detachment or to go into a mountain. It means to not identify unnecessarily, not be too attached to something, not be too detached from anything either. So balance, the best word is balance. And then you come to dharana, dhyana and samadhi, which are called the antarangas. They are the internal limbs of yoga because um, if you practice the first five limbs, then they are the outcome. Your ability to focus, your ability to meditate on something, and your ability to access uh, union with true self, with that consciousness, which is what Samadhi is. So yoga is bringing the Ashtanga together in order to bring the Koshas together, in order to achieve Samadhi. So yoga is both the practice and it is the goal. Yoga has a profound effect on the human mind and body, and its healing powers have been known for over 2,000 years. It works not only on the joints, but also on the endocrine system, helping glands to function properly. The effects on the brain are also well documented. Today, scientists at India's Nimhans are exploring the science of yoga and its effect on the brain. This is one of the areas which have been recognized way back in our, the motto that alternative medicine, what we call as an alternative medicine, to be part of neurosciences and mental health. Apart from that, we also have an advanced center for yoga, which is about five years old. We have examined the yoga effects on the brain using MRI. There are some areas of the brain which get better following yoga. And in the, there are some situations wherein when chanting of Om happens, there are areas of the brain which are changed for the betterment of the individual. When you keep chanting Om or any other thing, you read Quran, you read the Bible. When you keep reading it loud, you start resonating in your ears. From the ears, the electrical activity comes down and then it starts ascending up. Okay, As it ascends up, it causes a calming of it. How yoga could help us in the management of patients, for example, in mental health disorders, what we talked about as the stress. The stress is one of the important areas which is now causing a lot of problem in the global scenario. So yoga, without Soma, there is no psycho. Without psycho, there is no soma. They go together. 
if you ask the word very chitta vritti nirodha chitta is in the body body is a form of chitta a gross form of chitta so psychosomatic science was used by patanjali long long ago without using the word psychosomatic science so this contact of the body which is no skeletal body skeletal body in contact with the circulatory system circulatory system is connected to the nervous system when the nervous system is connected which is known as a indirect unconscious mind so when the nerves are strengthened positive brain comes to them positive thinking will come yoga is a universal practice that brings you into balance and harmony with your life no matter what religion or ethnicity you belong to awareness and attention when they come together there is no movement of intelligence there is no movement of uh, mind so there is a state where i my body my mind my breath has finds no differences at all i'm living uh, even now though i'm talking to you even my warmth of my toe i can feel how much warm it is at that time what happens there is no movement there is no thought is completely a state of forgetfulness of body and mind but to be one with the cosmos cosmic energy and the individual energy meeting together as the need for natural therapies disease prevention and a more spiritual approach to life becomes even more important in this ecological age a hundred autumns may we see a hundred autumns may we live a hundred autumns may we know a hundred autumns may we rise